Hey everybody, it's Zach from Van Life Outfitters here to talk a little bit about alternator charging. Uh, specifically, we've been seeing a lot of our customers who have Ford Transit vans with the factory dual alternators. Uh, we, as you probably know, have tons of videos and blog posts about adding a secondary alternator, uh, specifically like a nation's alternator managed or regulated by a wake speed regulator. Uh, and you know, we're big fans in general of charging with a secondary alternator because of how powerful and quick you can handle managing your house batteries in that way. Uh, we're also fans of just using your vehicle to create as much utility in your camper van as possible. So for instance, we like these isotemp water heaters that actually use the engine coolant to heat your water when you're driving. But in this case, we wanted to dive into some possibilities to take advantage of that secondary Ford alternator without taking it off and putting a nation's kit in. How can we get the maximum charge from that factory secondary alternator? On transit vans with a factory second alternator, there's a 60 amp customer connection point, uh, CCP1, from the main vehicle alternator, and a 175 amp customer connection point, CCP2, from the secondary. These are both located on the bottom rear of the driver's seat with fusing underneath the seat. In this example system, let's assume that we're using lithium batteries with an internal BMS or battery management system. This means that the BMS is inside the battery and this is the device that makes sure the batteries are happy, that they're not over voltage, under voltage, too hot or too cold. Most of these batteries also have limits on the amount of current or power you can put in or take out continuously. You'll want to know the specification. It's usually called the maximum continuous or recommended continuous charge or discharge. To make this specific, let's use some SOK 206 amp hour batteries. These have a recommended charge current of 40 amps or a maximum of 50 amps and a maximum recommended discharge of 100 amps. Now, when you string a couple of batteries together, these capabilities of the maximum charge or discharge get added together in parallel, just like the storage capacity of the batteries. So, for example, if you have three of these SOK batteries, you'd end up with 618 amp hours of storage with a maximum charge rate of 150 amps a recommended charge rate of 120 amps, and a maximum discharge rate of 300 amps. Now let's take a look at a different internal BMS battery. These are the Victron Super Pack batteries. They're 100 amp hour capacity, but their allowable charge rate is 100 amps. If we put three of these in parallel, we'd have a 300 amp hour battery bank with a maximum charge rate of 300 amps. What we're aiming for in this video is to be able to charge our batteries as fast as possible by maximizing the charge current uh, within the specifications of the battery. We're gonna base this system on our discounted internal BMS bundle. This is the bundle that allows you to essentially bring any kind of internal BMS battery and packages up a bunch of Victron Energy equipment at an awesome discount because of the bundle. And then we'll configure it much like the example wiring diagram that accompanies the bundle but instead of using two Orion DC to DC chargers, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of alternatives that offer higher current charging. The two Orion method works great in most vans with a single alternator, where the recommendation is to charge at less than 50% of the rating of that alternator. For instance, a ProMaster van with a stock 180 amp alternator. When you use two Orions for a total charge of 60 amps, that's about right, and it's not gonna overtax the alternator. But in this case, where we have a 175 amp customer connection point hooked up to a Ford secondary alternator, that would be just too many Orions. Or even if you used the larger, more expensive DC to DC charger from some place like Sterling, you're just gonna need too many DC to DC chargers so you can refer to this free example wiring diagram on our website as kind of the baseline system. And then what we'll go over are essentially sort of deviations or changes from that 
to add some higher charging current options. So let's take a look at option number one. Uh, we're gonna use one uh, Ryan DC to DC charger running off the 60 amp CCP1. And then we're gonna use one Smart BMS CL12100 running off of the 175 amp customer connection point number two. The Orion will charge at 30 amps and it's a proper charger, meaning it's gonna provide a complete charge profile from bulk into absorption and then into float. But why are we using a BMS on CCP2? This device is actually designed to be an external battery management system for Victron smart lithium batteries, but it can be used exclusively as a current limiting charging device where you bypass the BMS functionality by using one of these M8 battery cables in a loop to mimic a happy battery bank. And the current limiting thing is actually really important. If a lithium battery bank is discharged, it'll try to take as much current as it can, and you would likely blow that 175 amp fuse if you used a regular relay that didn't have a current limiting feature, something like a Blue C ACR. Quick note about fusing. In this little example, we are showing a mega fuse downstream from the customer connection points on both the Orion and the BMS. We like to do it this way, even though there's fusing before these connections, uh, it's a real bear to get into and you have to take the seat off and so forth. So by adding some other fuses outside, perhaps on the seat base itself or just outside, if you ever do blow the fuse, it's much easier to get to. The way that the CL12100 BMS works is that you install an appropriate size mega fuse right here, and then you go into the settings of the device in Victron Connect through Bluetooth and tell it the fuse size that you used. It will then limit the charging current flowing through the device according to this chart in the manual. So if we use a 125 amp fuse, we can expect to see about 100 amps of current flow from the CCP2 back to our battery bank. The CL12100 is not a charger, meaning it doesn't have like a charge profile like the Orion does. That means you need at least one charger in the system to be able to get the batteries 100% full by going through that last absorption phase which is the stage of charging where there's a high voltage and low current and the cells of the batteries balance up to get to 100%. In this example, we have the Orion charger, but we could also use other chargers like a solar MPPT charge controller or an inverter charger. The current coming from the CL12100 is basically the bulk charge only. When it comes to alternator charging, this example would combine the 30 amps from the Orion and the 100 amps from the CL12100 to total 130 amps. This is really great because you would need four Orions to accomplish the same thing. Best of all, the CL12100 retails for only $176. So the total cost of this alternator charging solution is around $400 plus your wiring and circuit protection. So let's talk recharge times. If we had that 618 amp hour SOK battery bank and we brought our batteries down to 20% state of charge before recharging them, we would need about four hours of drive or idle time to recharge the bank. And this approach can scale. If you wanted to go bigger, you could double up on the Orion DC to DC chargers, going from 30 amps to 60 amps. And you could also potentially add two of the CL12100 BMSs with something like 80 amp fuses, providing 60 amps of charging or 120 amps in total. Doubling the system in that way would bring a total charge current to around 180 amps, which is approaching what you would get with a nation's secondary alternator kit that can charge, you know, maybe 200 to 250 amps. But this solution uses your Ford factory alternator and is probably under $1,000. Okay, option number two. This is what we would call DC to AC to DC charging, otherwise known as the Orton method, from the name of the fellow who popularized this online. In this example, we have a single Orion DC to DC charger wired up to CCP number one, just like the first example, 
But instead of using the CL12100 BMS, we're going to assume that there's an inverter charger in the system. In this case, it's going to be the popular Victron MultiPlus 123120. That last number in the name tells us that the charger part of this unit is capable of charging at 120 amps. Also in this example, we have an inexpensive inverter, such as a Renogy 2000 watt unit. These are around $280. One of the features of the CCP2 is that it's only active or live when the ignition key is on in the transit. In this way, the inverter is only gonna run when the key is on. Then we have the 120 volt AC inverted power from the Renogy inverter wired into a switch that allows us to choose which power supply flows into the input, AC input one, of our main multi-plus inverter charger. On the other side of the switch would be our shore power. Then whichever power source is selected on the switch will be used by the multi-plus to either run the loads in the system or if there's extra power to charge your batteries up to its 120 amp rating. So now you can see we're going from DC the CCP2 connection to AC with the inexpensive inverter to DC again using the MultiPlus charger capacity. In this system, if there were no AC loads running off the MultiPlus, we could see charging up to 120 amps combined with the 30 amps from the Orion DC to DC charger for a total of 150 amps. This approach is more costly, totaling around $630 plus wire and circuit protection, and perhaps it's a little more complicated. Also, if you don't like the idea of a manual switch, you can use an automatic transfer switch, such as this one that defaults to one source. In this case, you could wire it such that the default is shore power, and that's what would be sent onto the MultiPlus whenever it's available, and the fallback would be the Renogy inverted power. These transfer switches are around $150. So hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you might take advantage of that extra charging current available to you if you have a Ford Transit with a factory secondary alternator.